I've been missing my mini discs and uh, I'm in the mood to fix something so I'm going to have a go at fixing my uh, MZE501 mini disc player. Got this in an earlier video. Uh, I've been a little bit distracted with uh, cassettes and uh, records, vinyl and record players uh, and turntables lately but I've been missing my mini discs so I thought I'd have a go at fixing this. Got this um, in a bundle of uh, mini discs, there'll be links to all the related videos in the description box below as usual. Now the situation we've got here is um, it does appear to charge but it doesn't say charging on the uh, on the um, remote on the display and it doesn't you're not supposed just read the manual you're not supposed to play it within the unit now sometimes it plays and sometimes it doesn't play and sometimes it appears to be charging but I, even if it's playing properly it appears to be charging but i don't think it's charging the battery and i think i know the reason for that it's relating to battery corrosion now when i did the original video on this i didn't have to clean up the contacts because they looked pretty good but if you turn it around you can see that there's fair amount of corrosion on the back of the content contacts so I think it's been cleaned up and one thing I was worried about was um, was there any um, corrosion on the main circuit board it doesn't look like there is I don't really want to have to take it to pieces to find out uh, let me see if I can get some light on the subject so I just use a torch to look inside that it doesn't to me look as if there's any corrosion inside it just looks as if it's on the outside of this part here let's zoom in a little bit and it doesn't appear to have i might be a bit overexposed there let me take the light off it doesn't appear to have gone any further than the hinge so um i've noticed on other units it's got inside and actually on the circuit boards and when it does that it uh, affects the button presses and stuff like that i've had to clean one of those off before so anyway that's what i'm going to do i'm going to take this off here figure out how to take it off it looks fairly simple try and keep it in shot and still look around the camera at uh, what to do so oh, be back in a sec i'll have to edit out some of the uh, footage here and there's some noise from the f family who's got uh, company next door in the room next door so it's this little bit here i think i need to lift up there we go i don't know whether we actually focused on that let's try again here we go there we go that's how you get it off anyway talking of comments i received oh, like that oh i need some vinegar in a minute I received a very generous super thanks from a fellow YouTuber called Andrew Hinge. Um, he's only got a few videos, but his video production, I think he works, um, I think he owns a video production company. And his videos are, the production quality is really good. And he's done a couple of mini disc videos. And one, his most recent one is about the M-Crew software from Sony. Uh, you might have heard of Sonic Stage from Sony, but well, M-Crew was a different piece of software that hardly anyone knows about. And he's done an excellent um, documentary on it, which I'm going to link to in the card just up the top and also in the description. It's well worth going and having a look. And bear in mind, he doesn't do many videos. Um, you might as well subscribe to his channel. You're not going to get spammed. But uh, the stuff he produces is really quite excellent. Uh, and that's not related to the super thanks he gave me. But um, if you do see this, Andrew, thanks again for the super thanks. And well done on that excellent video. I had to watch it a couple of times to take it all in because it was there was so much information in it. It was really good. Anyway, I need to run downstairs, get some vinegar. Back in a bit. Unlike Andrew, my video production is not professional or good. So there's my box of players and recorders. I'm going to stick a bit of paper on there. And it just raises it off the desk to make it a bit easier for me to work on and keep it in shot and nice and steady. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is one of my favourite and most useful tools. It's just a letter opener. It's quite blunt, but it is useful for this type of work. Hopefully there's enough light on here for you to see. So what I'm going to do is scrape some of this 
greeny blue battery corrosion off here. Now, if you haven't seen this sort of thing before, just give you a recap. When um, alkaline batteries leak, they leak out the positive electrode, and the battery and the the liquid that comes out of the battery is corrosive, and it goes a funny colour, and it basically eats away at everything. It eats away at the gold on the contacts, the metal, the plastic, the whole lot. I've got to zoom in a bit more here. There we go. I can see that a bit better. So the more I do of these, the better, basically. So all I'm doing is scraping off the worst of it without scratching the uh, underlying contacts. Just being very careful on it. Sorry if it's going out of focus a bit there. And because it's alkaline, you can neutralise it using a mild acid. And that's vinegar. So having cleaned the worst of it off, because there's lumps of it now. Now that, even though it's dry, I've found that that can continue to eat away at the components inside there. So what we want to do is neutralize the acid. And what we use for that is white vinegar, distilled vinegar. It's distilled so therefore it doesn't have any um, uh, anything else, basically. It's evaporated off and the vapor is collected and then condensed again, so it doesn't contain any contaminants. Although it does say it's got um, barley added to it, I think it is, um, the, the bit we're using here doesn't contain hardly any barley. Um, and its acidity is 5%, so you don't want anything too acid, because the, uh, the alkaline is not very, um, uh, the value of it isn't very high. You can use uh, fruit juice like lemon juice and things like that, but that lemon juice contains sugars and other things. So I don't generally use lemon juice. Plus the fact lemon juice is a habit of going off, whereas your vinegar will stay in the cupboard for ages. And it's very cheap. Don't buy anything fancy. Just buy normal, cheap, you know, store's own brand vinegar. And you hardly need any of it. That's probably too much in there. And of course, the uh, ubiquitous cotton bud as well. Now there's great demonstrations online, and maybe some on my channel as well, of it fizzing away when you put the um, the acidic vinegar on it. So I'm going to put the acidic vinegar on there, and I'm going to zoom in in a minute. And I don't think we'll see much fizzing, because um, I've scraped most of it off. But the fizzing is the chemical reaction. Let's see if I can get it in close. You can actually see it fizzing away there. So the fizzing is the chemical reaction between the alkaline and the acid and it's probably making some sort of um, some sort of noxious chemical which I don't know of so the key thing here and that's a good shot actually even though it won't be high resolution this camera is a 1080p camera and we zoomed in at two times so what I think happens is this contact here is what makes contact with the battery. That's a gold contact. And that's attached to this metal contact, which I guess is, uh, I've never seen one rust, so it must be something that doesn't rust, aluminium maybe. And then it goes through, that plastic part there is just the, the hinge, part of the hinge. But the electrons flow through and touch into this, the whole sort of um, center part of the hinge there, the spindle. And then that is attached inside there somewhere with solder to the rest of the circuit board. So the power travels through this um, gold contact, through the hinge and into the circuit board. So any corrosion we've got inside these contacts here, I think this might be some sort of uh, something to put pressure on these contacts to make a good connection. So any corrosion that's in there will affect the uh, the resistance, will make higher resistance um, on the contacts and therefore you'll get less power going through to the battery, uh, through to the unit. And also when it's charging, it's got charging point, points on the bottom of the unit and there's a stand that it sits in. And of course that charge has to then go through the battery. There's a charging, charging circuit inside the unit and that charges the battery. And I think that's why we might be able to get power out of 
the battery sometimes and into the unit for playing but it's not charging very well so the fizzing has stopped now so you can put more and more of this on but of course the more you put on the more you've got to get off eventually so we'll just have another little go there I can see there's a tiny little bit in the dip there I'll try and, and a toothbrush is handy for this as well which I'm going to use in a minute I'm just going to let that go in there see if there's any more fizzing see if we can get some focus there we go I'm not an expert in any of this, I've just done quite a few of them. And just because I've got more mini disc videos than anyone else on YouTube at the moment doesn't make me an expert. Maybe it just makes me a slow learner. So I think that is enough. There's no more fizz in there, so I guess there's no more chemical reaction. So what I'm going to do is going to get my grotty old toothbrush. Might as well have a little bit of a dip in there. In there. And I'm going to try and get into that little dip. A little indentation there because I really, really want to try and get all of this off. I would hope though that the vinegar has neutralized any um, alkaline that is um, going to react and therefore it's going to stop it from um, corroding any further. Now, one of my most, my most um, watched videos for this sort of thing. Um, in the uh, in the early days was when I used a uh, a floss harp dental floss harp to get in underneath one of these because the corrosion was in between the plastic bit and the um, and it it wasn't just to game the YouTube algorithm but it did actually get surprisingly a lot of videos so I'm going to see if I can dip that in there yeah I can I don't know whether this is going to make any difference. But it's quite easy to get the floss harp in the air. On this particular model, that bit doesn't pop up. That plastic bit doesn't pop up. On the other one I did, it does pop up. And I generally put links to all of the videos I mentioned in the description box. So once you've had a look at this, you can, uh, at the end of all of my videos, there's a little five or ten second pause at the end where, uh, where YouTube recommends another video that's good you know, best for viewer it says and uh, and I can put in suggested videos and that's a good time for you to just pause the video and then go to the description box and have a look because the more you watch the more adverts are shown and the more advertising revenue I get a share of so it really does help out but I think it's better that you enjoy the videos um, so if you're enjoying this one you might enjoy some of the others so I think that's clean enough so now we've got a situation where that is covered in vinegar, which is acidic. So we've got rid of the alkaline, which is corrosive, and now we've got it covered in acid from the vinegar, which is a bit stinky at the moment. Where's that other thing? It's down there. So I might go and throw that in away in a minute. So that's looking nice and clean now. You can see there, probably, just about, there's some corrosion where the gold has been corroded away. And I can see another little spot there. And what I have no oh I should have done it. What I have noticed is I'm watching this on a five and a half inch phone screen. That's what I'm recording on. And I did actually buy a uh, I think it's about 17 inch external monitor and figured out that I can stream the video that I'm shooting onto an external monitor and see it on a big screen. If you're watching this on anything bigger than a five and a half inch screen, then you can see more than I can. There we go, I think that'll do. But as I say, we've now got acidic vinegar all over it, uh, which probably will corrode, corrode it as well. So what we're going to use now is we're going to use isopropyl IPA to give this a good clean. Now IPA, this one's 99.9% .9 pure, I think, says somewhere on there. Uh, anyway, it's very pure. And I like it because it's got a pump a pump on it so I can dispense small amounts. Now this will clean off, it will dilute the acid, and that's all over my desk, that's not good. So I can spray quite a bit on this. I don't want it going inside the machine ideally because it takes a while to dry out. So you can spray it into um, a receptacle, I generally spray it into the lid, and use a cotton bud. And the purpose of this is to dilute the acid that's on there and then we can wipe it off. Because we don't want to leave acid on there, in the same way we didn't want the alkaline in there. 
So I'm just using a normal tissue here to dry it off a little bit. So we could dry off our dry off the acid from our manky old toothbrush. Spray a bit of this in here, this is another way of doing it. So if you haven't got a spray action one, you can just dip in a cotton bud. I'm going to get a clean cotton bud. And then just give that a good wipe on both sides. So the wiping will take off the, the vinegar, the residue of the vinegar. And then what isn't, what you know, it's still wet, but what will happen is that will dry. I wonder if I can give you a demonstration. It's not easy to see on my hand. No, so that will dry. You spray this stuff, the IPA, and it's because it's a... Um, because it's a solvent, it will um, it will evaporate eventually. I've just noticed, I don't know what that white bit there is. Is that the, oh, that's the back of the plastic bit. So you've got plastic bit there. Really should have set up my extra screen. Yeah, there it is. So I'm also gonna give, just on this hinge, because I think this is the key to it, the key to getting good charging and good battery use out of it, is to make sure that the contacts between the hinge in the in the hinge are clean because you've got two different types of metals in there and I'm pretty sure that that is fundamental to the transfer of power to and from the battery so I just put a little bit of that in I want to try and I can't really get into the hinge I and mean, I could try and desolder it and take it to pieces but I don't think that's really I'm more likely to break something if I do that anyway that should do Okay, so I need to give that plenty of time to dry out now. That will just dry out, that will air dry. Now where did I put that? There it is. So this is the, um, you see some of these sometimes, they're absolutely filthy, but that seems quite clean in now. So we don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to give it a few minutes to, um, dry. I might as well put it back together actually. So once you've taken it off, you just pop it back in again. While I've got this off, I don't think this part is what contacts in the bat with the battery. In fact, let me put a battery in there. So the battery is in there now. And the battery makes contact just there on that side. Just there. And it's that gold part there, I think, that makes the contact. I'm going to give that a scrape off as well, just in case. Though it looks okay. Anyway, that tiny little bit there, gold contact, is what makes contact with the battery. But what this bit is for here is that pushes against this. And if that is depressed, if that is too close to the main piece of metal there, then the door is loose. I found this out recently. Someone made a comment that they've got a loose door and I did some experiments and I realized that it's actually that bit at the bottom that pushes against. So now I'll push that on. I've just got to push this down, this little bit down a bit, if you can still see it, because that's what stops it falling off. And you see there, if you can, that piece there, that piece of metal, I don't know whether you can see it, probably you can, is pushing against this piece of plastic and that's what gives it enough friction to keep the door closed. So if you've got one like I I managed to make one of mine the same, that you just gently touch it and it loses its connection, it's because that piece of plastic needs to be bent more towards there. Anyway, is there a battery in this now? Yeah, it wasn't working before I tried this. It had lost its, uh, lost its connection, it's still not working. But it might be that the battery is a bit flat, or it could be that it's just all a bit wet. Oh, actually, that battery is flat. Let me put the other one in. There we go. So we've got power now. So let me just see if I can clear away without having to edit too much. Okay, let's get our um, remote control. There's no display on this unit. There we go. I bought this cute little um, 
It's Sony speaking, it's really loud. I bought it from a charity shop today. Very handy. Oh, you're not supposed to play it while it's in the unit. That's what the instruction manual says. So there we go. So if we can get some focus. So we'll stop it. We'll take out the disc. As a factual fact, we'll take out the disc, take out the battery. Put the battery back in, put the disc back in. And this wasn't happening before, it wasn't reliable. And there we go, so we've got our track listing. Uh, is it playing? Or did I press the pause button? Oh yeah, press the pause button, it's right there. <laughs> I did this before when I first got this and I demoed this on the other video. So next track, so that's all working well. So let's stop it, pop it back in its cradle, and it is charging. And we'll see if it actually says charging on the remote, and it wasn't before, but we'll see if it does now. Okay, this one says charging when you plug when you drop it on the cradle, it says charging. But this one doesn't appear to be charging, but the light is on. So let's, let's test it again. So I'm going to take that battery out and put this one in, which I think is flat or nearly flat. Oh, it's going to play now, isn't it? Oh, that's unfortunate. So, yeah, I was hoping that I could prove that it's charging. So you'll have to take my word for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I wonder if I've got a flat battery. Back in a minute. I'm so unprepared on these videos. Honestly, I just, I don't really have a time that I do them. I just do them when I fancy them. It is a nine thirty-two on a Saturday night at the moment. So let's see if I can find a battery that is too flat. Here's one. That's an original one. I wonder what happens if we plug it in. Okay, well, it's appearing as a full battery now because it's probably getting a charge. But it says the player will malfunction if you play it um, when it's in the cradle. So let's take it out of the cradle, see if we get, oh, we still get something on there. Okay, let's find another battery that's flat. That's an original one, so these things are probably about 30 years old now. There we go, you can hear it, maybe hear it. Let me hold it up to the camera, up to the phone. So that means it's got a little bit of charge, it's trying to go, but as soon as it draws power from the battery, the battery voltage drops and it goes back off again. So let's see if this makes any difference. Just give it, I will, um, I don't know how long to charge this. I wonder if just those few seconds will put enough charge in the battery to make it work. No. So what I'll do, I don't want any, you know, cuts in the video, which might indicate that I'm cheating. God, I can't get any focus, there we go. Let's try again. Ah, still nothing. Alright, let's try another battery. Don't know how I'm going to edit this out. I might just play the whole thing. Oh, I left to edit now because I've just spilt my vinegar all over the table. Right, I don't know how I'm going to edit this video. Better you see it walks and all, I suppose. Right, let's see if we can find one of these other batteries that's just got a little bit of power on it. That one's got none at all. That's the one that did have some. Unfortunately, they self-discharge, so if you put them away, they self-discharge. Generally, I've got two players on my desk. Ah, low battery, excellent. So that's registering as a low battery. And unfortunately, when you take the battery out, the beep comes back on. So that should be charging now. So while we're letting that charge, it wouldn't play before, we'll let that charge. I'll show you what I usually have on my desk. I've got this cradle and this uh, uh, MZN710 and this MZN710 
Now typically in this one, in the silver one, I'll have my 90, my favourite tracks from the 1980s. I've got... Um... Right, so this is me doing editing. I had to edit out some of the commentary here. Uh, but I wanted to leave the footage on real time so you can see how long it had been on charge. Um, so I just put one in after the other and this is my 1980s playlist. And if I want to listen to something specific like an album or a mix, a mix disc, mix tape that I've done, I drop it in this one and then I can just alternate. So there's always a battery in each of these players and then once I've uh, played them, generally I'll play them in the cradle. So I'll hook this up to my Sony amp, which unfortunately is now blown. And I'll play this if I want to listen to, say, a Jamiroquai, um, some Jamiroquai tracks. I'll put a disc into that, which is Jamiroquai. And then if I want to go back to my um, uh, my uh, 80s playlist, as long as I don't take the disc out or take the battery out, then it restarts in this player where I left off, which a lot of players don't. They start back at the beginning of the disc. And then you end up listening to the same tracks at the beginning of the disc all the time. So with that real-time interlude over, let's take this out and see if this has actually charged the battery. Yes, it has. Now, it shows us full battery here because the battery's just been on charge and it's probably resulting quite high voltage. But that voltage won't stay high for very long. The battery will quickly drop back to its normal voltage it's just that it's just been on charge so that is proof and if you're an electronics expert please comment to let me know whether i'm right on that but that's the way i understand it so the battery's got a high voltage at the moment because it's just come off charge but that voltage won't last long um, it needs a lot longer to charge and this apparently takes six hours to give a full charge so that's going to be a trouble to edit, but we'll call that it for this video. Um, and what I'll do is I'll play a little bit of this track while a little bit of music plays you out. And you can then choose to watch either the video that's showing um, as a suggested video or uh, the playlist that I had at the end. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.